Good evening, everyone. Nightcap at nine. Hope everybody is uh, kind of settled. Um, let me invite one other person I know need to be on here, because that's my my home girl. I hope all is everybody's pretty good for the day. Got a lot to talk about. Of course, <laughs> I I really am hoping that we. At this point, when we get get started, that we can uh, we can actually think about connecting the dots of things. Um, again, I'm Lorraine Lamar. Let's start there. Um, you, I've been on uh, doing this. Uh, I started back doing it uh, the day after Christmas, December 26th. Prior to that, this whole thing got started. Um, with me just the whole election time this was a couple of years or so ago and i just started um people were so at one another's throats i decided to just uh come on and start talking and getting people to talk to one another and in doing so um uh it really grew i mean hundreds of people it, it really grew big and i was really surprised and and, and there was not any mean talk, any name calling, but uh, people from different sides had different opinions about things they wanted to say about the issues. And um, and it was really, it, it went pretty well. Well, of course, and after the election, everything, it kind of died down. Then I forgot all about it and went on back to what I was doing and, you know, my business and so forth and so on. And um, and then recently here, um, right up right during right before Christmas again, and I, of course we could see what's been happening and uh, the whole division again in our nation has been it's just I, I I'm I'm actually just done tired I really am I'm done tired. So um, I was kind of you know uh, I'm a radio host I'm on every day Monday through Friday. Uh, my, if my assistant comes on, my social media manager person. That's what I call them. They'll post those links of my uh, radio station, which you don't have to worry about getting the dial and what number. You can simply go hillcountrypatriot.com and uh, when it comes up and uh, click either, if you want to listen to it live, you can click listen live, 10 a.m. Texas Central Time. Or you can go and look at the podcast, meaning they actually record uh, two weeks worth of shows. And all you have to do is, again, Hill Country Patriot, scroll down to where it says local host. You can't miss the chocolate face. And when you see me, just click my name, and then it says podcast. Booyah. And then you can listen to it at your own leisure. So I'm a radio host, and I've been doing this for a number of years now. Not a lot of years, but a number of years. And uh, it's been fun. It's, it's a wild ride. As a matter of fact, just to give you an idea, uh, even my topics that I have during the day, when I come on at night, like right now, the character is totally different. It, it just is. There she is. Thank you, Cherie. Right on, right on. The character on the radio, trust me, is totally different. There she looks. She's got all my stuff. Ooh, yeah, there she goes. She got um, my, my YouTube channel, you know, Speak Her, H E R, Her, Speak Her 2023. Yep, you, they got me, she got me for YouTube. I've got a, uh, a, a, my website. And then, of course, here I'm on Facebook and then the Hill Country Patriot Radio. Uh, and very soon, when you're going to be able to see on that website a book I'm working on. Yes, sir. I'm working on a book uh, since and, and the, it came out of this whole. You know, fear is, fear is going on constantly about race. And it's called Black by Popular Demand, the book. It's a five-point series of it. Real quick, easy reads. But it's uh, topics like one of the books is the first one that's coming out is Pimps, Politicians, and Crooked Preachers. Uh, the the second one that will come out, I believe it is, Stop Drinking the Kool-Aid. It's an, uh, no, no, five, five Easy Ways How to Leave the plan, Plantation. And then another one is uh, Stop Drinking the Kool-Aid. And another one is, uh, which I really love, is this, <laughs> this one, which is talking a lot about um, where we where, where black people uh, continuously live a double life and double standards. You know, we, we vote one way, we live another, and, you know, the whole thing. So uh, I, I, I call one of the books is Who's Really Killing Black People? That's a really good one. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm just giving some background as to how this is all getting started. 
Again, uh, I'm Lorraine Lamont, uh, I'm a radio host. My my assistant just posted my website, posted the YouTube channel, and she posted, which is really good, the Hill Country Patriot, the radio station, and I was talking about my book. I could use your prayers. I could use your prayers. Um, I'm just, you know, doing a lot of things, and this book is, I'm just trying to drive this soul of mine. Do it. Get it done. And uh, the book is is a series of Black by Popular Demand, Why Race is Always at the Top of the List, How Every uh, every organization, every politician on both sides. By the way, I'm, I, you know, I've, I'm an equal opportunity destroyer. <laughs> I believe that both, you know, there's crooks on both sides. So I'm not, oh, all these people are right. All these people are wrong. No, 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 no. Um, and there's not none not righteous. The word of God says none not righteous. None of us, not one of us. So don't even think that. And uh, so anyway, but and so I started doing this nine o'clock thing. It was wonderful. I did it a couple of years ago when everybody was at each other's throats or so with elections and all. And then, then I had lots of people to time me, you know, chiming in. Then after election, I just stopped it and I'm starting it back again. I started it the day after Christmas, which is my husband's birthday, the 26th of December. Poor thing. <laughs> and, um, so, um, and, and I'm dealing again with, uh, this whole area of division and, 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 and not only just division, but what I chose to do is that on the radio, I'm a, that's where I was going. I'm a different personality on the radio. Really loud, good boy, hill country. This authentic certified neighborhood colored girl, what color am I? And so, um, it's, it's kind of comedic, but it's, uh, Boom, it's really punching. Just when you laugh and hold, throw your head back, boom, you get one right here. And it's really like gut and to the gut too. Makes you think about what you do, why you do it, and why you let it keep happening to you. So I deal with current events and uh, and then at the same time, I try to give biblical uh, uh, principles, uh, directions, and pathway of how to be able to address it. Uh, thank God the radio station that I have, when they first asked me to do a radio show, I thought, oh, I ain't got no time to do no radio. My word, I got a nonprofit for kids I've had since 2003. I've got husband, band, music, all this stuff, mission work. I... And my husband is the one that encouraged me. He says, no, babe, you sell radio, you don't know it. And he was right. I have not regretted it since. And I love the one of the reasons why I took the took the, the show is because I asked him this one question. I know you guys are Republican, conservative. I need to let you know. I says I've got to be a you know what is it what is it going to be? I got to be an equal opportunity hater. Of course they laughed, but I was very serious. And they looked at me, stopped the laughing, and says, "Okay, whatever's in the mind of Lorraine Lamon, that's what you use." And that's what I do. So, and that freed me up. So I, I open up with what I'm going to open up with here right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I get the awesome opportunity to be able to speak your word, to be able to share with your people, to be able to grow, fall down, get up and seek your mercy. I thank you that you have placed me in this country, in this body, in this gender for such a time as this. I thank you, Lord God. Bless your people listening and bless those who are struggling with all kinds of illnesses and sicknesses and family matters. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I want to open up with my, my premise that I frame everything on. And that is this. God who is omnipresent, which is at the end of the beginning of history at the same time. I'm, I'm the potent, uh, you know, omniscience, omniscience, however you want to say it. He knows all, he's all those things. Hey, Linda, welcome, welcome. You're on it, girl, tonight. So this is my, my, my whole everything I base upon. That the Father who sits high, looks low, is omnipotent, omniscience, omnipresence. He sees all, knows all, can do all. So that means he at the, he's at the end and the beginning of history at the same time. If God is at the end and the beginning of history at the same time, and he is, then he sees every day coming. And if he sees every day coming, he sees me, he sees you, he sees the crazies, he sees what's happening in Ukraine, he saw the country, divide, he saw all of this. And so you have to ask yourself, out of all the time that you were born, because he also chose that, your mom and your daddy, they, they were just instruments. No, 
So um, it, 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 even if they wanted to have a baby, if he didn't want you to be born, you wouldn't be born then. So he wanted you to be born. And the scripture speaks about how he saw us swimming in our mother's blood and our father's loins. And he said, boop, pop, I'm choosing you. But I'm not just boop, pop. I'm going to choose you for a certain time in history. And since I'm at the end and the beginning of history, this time that I'm putting you in, I'm going to make sure you have the gifts and the talents and what you need, the Holy Spirit, to be able to help you to deal with the issues of your time. This is why every human being must get it really down in here and down in here. You are not here for you. You need to, when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and look through those eyes, eyes which has been uh, known as, be called as the window, the window of the soul, you need to say that, uh, think that through and say it. I'm not here. Lord, my life belongs to you. You know, and, on, and before I get on my topic, so, this is why America right now is in the middle of being spanked by its, its papa. Spanked big time. Yep. You know, when you, when you, when a kid is done wrong and you're chastising them, of course, now if you spank your child, you know, you can go to jail, all kind of crazy stuff. That's right. Because government wants to rule you, you take care of your, your, your marriage. They want to be all in your business. They want to own you. That's, that's the spirit of socialism and Marxism. You know, the tyranny of it all, they rule and they reign. So, um, but you know, when you, you, you're chastising a child, your child, and they're like, they're like really stuck up. I'm not going to cry. They're still huffed up. It makes you matter, right? It does. It makes you matter. And that's how I feel kind of about the father. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, you know, then, right, right. But see, the problem is we, 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 we pray, father, help me, but we don't want, and we seek, but we don't want to humble ourselves. No, no, no. We don't. We don't want to repent. We messed up. Big thing. Get out of my life. Get out of my, get out of my room, get out of my womb, get out of everything, get out. I want to lay up, smoke dope, do what I want to do, divorce my wife, divorce my husband, get out. I want to do these things and I don't want you in my life telling me what to do. That's just a deal. That's just a deal right there. So when I say that the father who sits high, looks low, sees every day coming, he sees me and you and he placed you for such a time as this in this time in history. Why? Why? Because he wants you to be used by him to answer to the issues of this time. Yes, he does. Yeah, but you think it's your house, your car, my kids. No, I'm sorry. Those are just little byproducts. Those are benefits of it. No, you are here for the father's use. Meet for the master's use. Yes, you are. And the sooner we get that in here, travel the longest road that any human being will ever travel is 13 inches and in getting it from here to here, from the head to the heart, we are going to be, baby, we're on. So this is nightcap at nine. I chose this time because it's a time when everybody realized I didn't get the report done. Okay, that's it. All right. And I didn't get the car fixed. Okay, that's it. Okay. A lot of things didn't happen. Now it's just settle, 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 settle down. Cup of tea, cup, you know, whatever, coffee, a glass of wine, whatever you want. Nightcap at nine, bringing you down. And as I said, my radio show that I'm on five days a week, I'm a crazy person on the radio, loud and screaming. People say all the time, Ryan, why you keep shouting? Why you talking? so fast, you know, uh, you know, you'll have to ask the father about that. When I go on that radio, that's a whole nother human being. That's a whole nother being. That's just, this is who he wants me to be. And that's who I is. <laughs> I understand the grammar on that. So, um, but nightcap at nine, I take those topics that I talked about during the day in the radio and I come home at night and I talk about, talk about those topics a little slower, a little more concrete, a little more kind of clearer and back and forth. And, and this time I get a chance to hear your views because people chime in and start telling me what they think. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. So in December 26th when I started this, and I'll try to remember to slow down. <laughs> um, uh, we, I threw out the topic and I threw it out there, I think was... Um, I don't know, a weekday or whatever, and I just walk away. And when I walked away, the topic was, why do people stay to, choose to live together today as opposed to married? Why people do not honor getting married anymore? So, um... <laughs> so I I, I I remember when I did that I, I don't look at it I really don't I, I put it out there walk away my husband says honey have you seen your Facebook people are going back and forth and going, but they weren't being mean thank you Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
<laughs> they weren't being mean, but they were. They had a lot. And we had a summation. Basically, some people say that people uh, chose to live together because I just got to get to know them. We got to know each other. Another person says, I've been through a divorce, and I don't want to go through that ever again. You know, another person you know, they had all these different reasons. And ultimately... Uh, one of the things is that I, it, we really messed it down to is the fact that we don't want to really want to have to be accountable to God. Yeah. Yeah, because, because if we're going to expect the original intent to get the benefits of the original intent from the original design, we're going to have to obey the, obey the originator. And that's what the problem is. So that's there. And so, yes, and Christians have, have really ruined it in a lot of ways. A lot of ways, you know, I do a thing on my radio show called MIA Church Missing in Action. Uh, uh, sometimes it's a topic I hit on. We, we really messed up. A lot of us, why include a lot of us, because we've been divorcing at a rate like everyone else. So how can we tell the world, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't be getting the divorce? Well, please, we, we, like, really, really, you know, I, and I, and if I'm scattered a little bit, don't worry. I got a little bit of my notes in front of me and I do full circles. I get back to it. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, I remember uh, growing up and I remember getting my first job at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Uh, before I met Richard, I had two boys out of wedlock and there I was baby mama, that whole baby daddy mama thing, but I was working with that job. You know, and so, and I'd go and party all weekend and I'd come in on Mondays. In front of me was a, 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 a what we had like a, well, all around me. I had a Baptist on one part of me, had an apostolic here, a Catholic here, all of this and, and, and so forth. And, and, and yet they came in and they looked like prunes. They did. I came in, I'd, I'd have had a good time. Oh yeah, I've been out partying, having a good, but then I'm looking at all the so-called Christians around me. They look like prunes, dried prunes. I thought, ah, ah, ah. Why do I want to come to your church? So, um, again, full circle. Right now, I think the, the, the body of Christ, as well as the United, especially the United States of America, we're being spanked. We're being spanked right now by the Father. He's saying, drop to your knees, humble yourself, seek my face, and pray. Well, we drop to our knees. We have seeked his face, but most of us don't want to humble ourselves. So my topic on the radio today, I talked, uh, uh, you know, I'm still, uh, my summary topics were the marriage one and then also a couple of weeks ago, the sexification, I used to say of a indoctrination of a generation, but no, the sexification of a nation. And why is it so being driven, 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 transgender and LGBTQTEFGHYJK? I try not to leave out any of the alphabets. I'm just saying. And so um, when I look at all of that, and I think why the push forward? And a lot of people say, oh, well, one person said, well, they're, I think they just don't want to populate the world. And they're trying to, you know, lessen the population. And, um, uh, and another person said, well, that's because they're just really coming out against the family. Well, ultimately, when God uh, created uh, Adam and Eve, when he created the garden, again, and one of my, my, my assistants is going to do a painting of this one day, in the garden, he didn't put a Tesla in there. Well, Lorraine, what are you talking about? Well, he could have. He didn't put a big company and corporation in it. Yeah, well, he could have. He created a man and a woman. He didn't make a mistake. He did not make a mistake, and when he told them, he says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. But here's the other two parts that we have a problem with. It's not even taught in most churches. Dominion and, have, and subdue. To subdue and have dominion. What, what, well, what is that? That's, and, and, and so we, we have lost our dominion, and we have been subdued. And we choose that because of our, our choice not to serve God. God, get out of my life, get out of my womb, get out of my room, get out of everything. And he did. Being the gentleman he is, I think it was Ann Graham, not Ruth, said that, you know, God being the gentleman that he is, he obliged you and he got out. Here we are suffering. So my last topics were about that. And so the sexification of a nation, uh, kids being mutilated. What is it? Why, why, why? Schools, uh, unbelievable. Shame on the average parent does not show up at a school board meeting. Shame, shame, shame. You think little Megan, KK, and Ryan can get out of school if everything's going to be okay. You tell me you're going to spend 47 minutes. The average uh, statistics say 47 minutes 
if that much with your child when they come home and you drop them off in the morning to spend seven hours or more out of school, eight in the morning, you pick them up at three and they're being indoctrinated, being in indo and you're going to tell me that just getting them through elementary, getting them out of middle school, getting them out of high school, that it's going to be, listen, by the time they get to the seventh and eighth grade, fifth now, it's too late. You have a job on your hands. Yes, you do too, Mr. and Mrs. America. Yes, you do too. So um, long ago, it's like, oh, when kids get to high school, you got to watch them. Not anymore. It's, wait, not anymore. You know, we got our library, for instance, give you an idea. The American Library Association, Library Association, is oh, has a conference once a year, every two years. Big to do. They're opening up with drag queens. You know, they are, so you have to ask, what is the sexification? Why the drive, drive, drive? Well, John Money and Alfred Kinsey, back in the late 40s and early and, and mid-50s to 60s, had the philosophers, pedophiles, if I was most of they were, at least they, I know they were sickos, they uh, had this driving idea that the puritanical, again, Christian values was really, really stealing from. The sexual pleasures of life and that if the sooner we learn that, the better we would be in control. Even to the point of talking about little kids, how they could be aroused four, five, seven, six years old. They did studies, massive studies. Look it up. Alfred, Alfred Kinsey and John Money. So they couldn't really get it over because the churches during that time were saying, no, no, no. So they came up with the idea, let's build it into the system as an education and curriculum. And then little by little, they've got it in, got it in. Now, look at us. Look where we are. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God shall raise up a standard. But the standard can't stand if it's not sitting on, 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 on a solid foundation. It's almost like saying, I'm going to put a wall here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you're building it on sinking sand. And so this whole uh, sexification of a nation uh, and, and just the mutilation of our kids. And now there are lawsuits that are coming up. You can look them up. They're on there. The lawsuits that kids are, that got mutilated at 12 and, 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 and 11. And now they're 19 and 21, 22 and saying, Mama, Daddy, what were you thinking? I was 12 years old. I was not. Mama, puberty block, what were you thinking? Dad, I couldn't get a license at 9. I couldn't get, I couldn't drink at 9 and 10 and 12. It's, Dad, I couldn't, but, but yet I could, you could give me the choice. So I, I, it's coming back. It's, it's working its way back around. And uh, it's going to be hell to pay. So today's uh, subject, subject at on the radio station today, uh, uh, and, I, and then this week has been this whole thing about MLK, Martin Luther King. So now I'm getting around full circle. So here we go. And the Martin Luther King birthday, and the, what, and now they made this statue. And of course, black people don't lost their mind. Everybody don't lost their mind. White people are afraid to say anything because then they'll be, you know, they'll be deemed as racist. That it looks like it's this. It looks like it's a private park. I think it's disgusting. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> cracks me up. It really does. First of all, Martin Luther King has lost his flame and glory here, especially amongst black people. Yes, he has. You have to ask yourself, what happened? Long ago, we had Black History Month. We used to hear about what? Frederick Douglass. We used to hear about what? George Washington Carver. Oh, yes, we did. And then, of course, in more modern times came along Thurgood Marshall. You don't even know who that is. When I say Thurgood Marshall, which I had my book is down, it's upstairs in my, our bedroom. But Thurgood Marshall, prestigious, eloquent man, black man, walk into the Supreme Court, made papers and documents, put it together, made some open doors for a lot of people of color and economically disadvantaged people. Yes, he did. Don't hear anything about it. And it's a shame because when I look at them and I realize now you don't hear anything about them is because they no longer fit the narrative. No, they don't. And one of our topics we talked about last week or so was liberals. I'm, I'll be back in full circle. Just hold on. Buckle up. And my radio show, I says, put your arms and legs inside of the car. Buckle up. So hold on. Buckle up. But in, and one of the things that I, I, I talked about uh, is that how we had this third grade marshal, all these people, and we have now just put them to the side. It was very important when I was growing up and you had the Ozzy and Harriet's and you had TV shows where there was these 
good families would sit down to dinner and everything, and there were no black families. And so finally we got Bill Cosby. Oh, yes. Now, I mean Bill Cosby. Here he was. Bill Cosby, his wife's a doctor. He was some, I mean, prestigious, kids going to college and everything. And then what happened to Bill Cosby? It's a damn shame. Black people need to be ashamed. What a dishonor. He got up some years ago, because you ever you, you, you want to know, because as far as the women that they all came out and, oh, he was molesting me. Oh, he was this. Oh, he was just half of them so old. They can't even remember their name. Nonetheless, it wrong is wrong. And yes, it needs to be dealt with. But why did it come out? See, I'm on this whole thing. Ask the right questions, America. It's important that we ask the right questions. Don't let them just feed you, Pablum. Don't let them feed you out of a trough like an animal you never have to look up. So what happened? Well, this is what happened. Bill Cosby got up some years before all of this court stuff, all of this stuff that came out against him. He got up into an NAACP audience or a large audience that says, listen, black people, we tired of taking care of your kids. KK, Ray Ray, we tired of taking care of you, getting you out of jail. Take care of your own kids. He opened up the dirty laundry in the closet. He shut it out in front of everybody. And from that point on, an ax began to lay at his root. Unbelievable. Yes, it did. Now, the question I've asked people over and over again, where do you think the money came from? Oh, it didn't come from black people. No. Liberal-minded organizations, profited, not only, but, but they did, they supported and they sponsored that. Yes, they did too. A money of people that we don't know, but you better believe it wasn't a black organization. We hooked and they popped and did everything, but no, that's not where the, do you know how many, how much money was spent? The court cases and finally they got him. And here is a man whom we praised and we lauded for being able to finally get black families on TV doing something nice and decent and on. And we took him down to the root. Saw a picture of him coming out of jail. He was, had gotten sick. He lost weight. You talking about a destroying a man? They did that. So you have to ask yourself, what, what's, it, what's the deal? See, he didn't fit the narrative. Martin Luther King does not fit the narrative of today. I know, I know, we had a few little Martin Luther MLK. No, he does not. MLK believed in equality. Today's social justice is, it believes in equity. Equity. Equality says equal access. Equity says equal outcomes. For, it, it, democracy has nothing to do with it. And so the push for it and the push for it. And so my book that I'm working on is a five-point series, Easy Read. Uh, is Black by Popular Demand, the book. The first one I'm putting out is called Pimps, Politicians, and Crooked Preachers. I'm excited about that. I really am. I'm very excited about that because it just breaks it down, what a pimp is. And uh, bottom line, they all have in common the, one, the last P, which is panderers. That's what they are. Crooks, uh, pimps, politicians, and crooked preachers. So um, we've been, I've been talking about the Martin Luther King, uh, what has happened, you know what I mean? Why they don't fit the narrative. Frederick Douglass, who is a slave, was a slave, gets free, gets his freedom, goes and lives in Europe and comes back to the United States and serve in the House of Representatives. Why would any slave do that? He does not fit the narrative. He does not fit the narrative. So um, we are at this point right now. Black History Month is coming up in February. Notice how that has been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and Black Lives Matter was an atrocity, horrible, horrible, horrible. But you know, like the crazy aunt in the attic, they don't, you know, most black people, we don't want to talk about that. No, we don't want to talk about that. You know, and I, we had one topic um, I talked about last week or so about liberals, liberals, um, they, I, I, I have liberal friends, I have uh, g gay friends, liberal friends, Democrats, Republicans, uh, yes, I do. So did Jesus. <laughs> So anyway, um, the, the thing about it is that liberals, they mean you well. They really do. The problem is they won't preach what they practice. 
No, you mean practice what they preach? No, I said it the right way. They won't preach what they practice. No, they won't. What they do is, this is what they practice. They believe in getting married, having a home, their kids going to school, getting good grades, going to college, being able to get good jobs, and having a good life. Yes. But for our black people or people of color or either people of, you know, of low income, they, you can't do it. You can't. They just, I, you just can't do it. You can't take care of your kids. You can't have a, you can't buy a house. You can't pay your bills. You can't get in college. So we got to lower everything, dumb down everything, strap everything so that they can get in. Okay. Okay. Even to the point, not allowing Asians to take certain tests when scholarships are involved. How dare you? Are they born with a better brain? Hell to the no 17 times. Asians are, have the discipline in their families and the word, the missing jewel that we don't have in America. We lost it some time ago. What is that, Lorraine? Honor. Honor. What? You ever hear that? Only time you hear the word honor, we say judge your honor. That's the only time you're going to hear honor when they're standing in front of a judge. There's no more honor. Honor your mother and father that your days may be well and that it, it, it may be well with you. What is it? It's a tiny word. No, it means every damn thing. So we um, we have been on this whole topic of the of why we have taken the Martin Luther King and this things like that. It's going on down, 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 down. And then I went into this whole thing of, of <laughs> it's so funny how we have allowed ourselves to get in this position, you know, and, um, but yet, there is a father, his mercy and grace endure forever. His mercy and grace endure forever. And he will, he will see us out. He will see us through. And we have to make a decision that we do. We have to make that decision. Father, just like a little boy being spanked, daddy, daddy, I'm sorry. I, we messed up. Help us. But the sexification and all of this, that is really about destroying the family from the beginning of the original. Original intent the original design. So if you whack the original dis, dis, uh, in, uh, design, tear it, maim it, mutilate it, do, then you can, you can, you can cause the original tent not to happen. People do not want to be accountable to the Father. They do not want to be accountable to God. So we got, you know, the church, which is the most powerful, powerful, powerful entity on the planet. I am convinced of that. Has failed miserably. Yes, we have. We failed miserably. And so the Father is calling all of us to task right now. So my topic I, I put out on the on today, I'm, this is going to be the thing I'm going to put out for the weekend. I already put it out. It's probably going to really start a really crap storm. That's okay. That's okay. And one of it was, uh, how can you uh, tell the spirit of a Jezebel? Identifying the spirit of a Jezebel. Uh, or what do you think about that? <laughs> And then I had another question I believe uh, I, I had on there was that um, what happened to Martin Luther King and so forth and so on. And why are we why are we not looking at him anymore and what the way we treat them? I had another note I wanted to. Yes, uh, the, uh, the, the five signs of uh, Jezebel. I'll just run through it really quick. One of the things that when Jezebel, you know, this can be a female and, or male. It doesn't have to be a, a female. Everybody think, oh, that Jezebel. No, really. The spirit of Jezebel is, can be operating a man just like it can in a woman. Absolutely. And so uh, one of the things we know right off the bat uh, is that a Je the spirit of Jezebel is manipulative. They, very, they manipulate you. They're very manipulative. And then another thing that the spirit of Jezebel, they want, they want what you got for themselves. They don't want what you got so that we can be together on it. They want what you got for themselves. And as long as they can pull from the well of what you got or, you know, they want what you got for themselves. Even to the point of holding on to you, keeping you, so they can still milk you, milk you, milk you. And and and, and another sign of, of the spirit of Jezebel is that it un, it cuts all ties around you that you can speak wisdom to you. They make sure no one else can say anything else to you. Exactly. And everything you're doing, they're tied in it. You got a business, they're in it. You got friends, they gotta be in it. Everything they gotta be in it, and they control it. Very controlling, very manipulative. And the unfortunate thing about it, men and women both have the spirit of Jezebel. I'm going to name some names. Of course, it's going to maybe start a little crap story again, but that's okay. I really believe that I've been designed for this time, and this is why I don't have anything to lose and yet everything to gain. When I look at Meghan Markle, that's the spirit of Jezebel. I see it. I see it. I see it. Je Jezebels, if you notice one thing about them, they really don't have anything to offer. 
They'll milk that. They'll milk that cow, that well. And now even the the the, uh, the royal families say, okay, that's enough. We're sick of you. We're sick of you. Bottom line, it's all about the money. All about your your grandizement. That young man, Harry, right now, I guarantee you, because they're looking for money now. They're making movies. They're just flopping like, you know what? When that well runs dry, she will look for another. Yes, she will too. Mark my words. Yes, she will too. Spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, absolutely. When I think about, what's her name? Jada Pinkett. She's another one. The Spirit of Jezebel. Absolutely. Not Pacific, particularly, no talent, really. I mean, just general, yeah. But poor Will Smith. Not for who he is, but what he is. Not for who he is, but what he has. Yep, yep. All this grandizement for once. And the spirit of Jezebel is operating right now in the earth. So the spirit of Jezebel in politicians. Exactly, exactly. When I hear people vote my body or make the statement, my body, my choice, my body. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Guys, was it your body and your choice this? When you go to the gas pump and you paying, now we got this little, you know, where it's a little cheaper now. We're happy. I don't know what you're being happy for. That's not, that was, that's still high. That's still high. <laughs> it was. That's not what it was two, three years ago. That's not what it was. And what's worse, it's your own money. It's your own gas. It's your own reserves. <laughs> Jesus. You know, we're paying Iran for for for, for, for gas. For, we're paying them. That's right. To give us to give us gas. So, but my body, my choice. If it was your choice, then it seemed like it would be a different gas pump for you. If it's your body, my choice, if it was your choice, it seemed like your Christmas would have been a little bit different. You wouldn't be struggling like the average American household if it did this Christmas. My body, my choice. I could struggle. When I look at the when I go to grocery stores and I watch people. Uh, Because when I watch people, they stand and look at a chicken or let's just say they're looking at a product. And it's a general product. And they stand for a long time. They're just standing for a long time looking. Then I just watch them. You know, they're not looking because they're trying to pick the right one. They're trying to process in their mind. They cannot believe that the chicken that they paid $3 for, they're paying $10, $8 for. They're making that mental adjustment. My body, my choice. Listen, this is the choice. And I say to feminists and I say to all that whole movement, you got, you got several choices. Before you take a life, this is what you can do. You can get contraceptives and they're free. Please, you know, the government will make sure of that. And you're not, you can, you can actually, how about this? If it ain't working for you, know what? Well, you might want to pull out the whole damn plumbing. That may sound kind of gross. But I, I'm, I'm sensing that. You don't want to be a mother. You don't want to, you don't want to have any choice. Then okay, how about that? So my body, my choice. And then if they flip their vote, a lot of them, these were Republicans as well. Because like I said, crooks on both sides. And if Republicans, they're so nice. No. Conservative, no. Democrat, no. They're human beings and they, they're, they're liars and cheaters on both sides and always will be. This is why the truth, we need to, since the word of God says the truth is set you free, uh-uh. You got to want to know the truth for the truth to set you free. Somebody tell you that a mountain is over there, don't clip, jump off that cliff, cliff, don't step over here, you're going to fall, la, 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 la. You don't want to know the truth, down you go. So we're being spanked right now, America. Yes, we are. I'm full circling around to some of this because I'm saying I talked about the Jezebel spirit. Then I also definitely wanted to talk about... <laughs> The, uh, the question I wanted to ask everybody to kind of think about is that why this whole papers, 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 and they're finding papers here, finding papers there. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, okay. Anybody, anybody know who took the dang picture? Who initially found the papers? Since it's been going on for months, we didn't even know what's happening to now. It's a question. It may, it may seem very minuscule, but I, I think it's very important. Who took the picture initially and turned it in? Who found the papers? So here's my take. 
I'm going to sit that out there along with some other things this weekend and see which one clicks and we'll come back. Um, I'll, I'll do tomorrow, but then Monday I'll put something out there and then we'll find out what happens. <laughs> who will take the bait on that one and come up with some things. But who, I asked myself, you know, who, who took the picture? Okay, so here's two premises I'm looking at. One is, of course, you know, um, uh, uh, J Joey B, you know, gosh, you know, what, what do they, you know, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I don't like to talk about old people. I, I respect the office, but no, I don't have respect for the man. I really don't. But I do respect the office of the president of the United States. I, and I try to teach kids and everybody I'm around, you know, let's still be respectful. But it's been a joke in a lot of ways. So here's one perspective on now. Why is the paper surfacing now? Right at the time when we they have spent, oh God, the money that they have spent. My phone is reminding me I have 15% battery power. The money they have spent on the trial, and, I mean on the, on, the, on the investigation for Donald J. Trump. The money. I believe that it's weak at this point. I believe they don't have anything. And I believe that's just a possibility. This is a nice way of saying, well, we will let this surface, because they've had them since September, and we'll say, okay, we gonna, Joey turns his in because he turned his in and he didn't turn it. You're the bad, bad guy. I mean, just as stupid as that. I mean, I, I don't put anything past third graders. I don't. I don't. Some other people say it's because maybe his own party is saying, okay, Joey, you've been a good boy. Okay. But you know, you can't really run in the race now. Okay. So this is a good farewell. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. That's what some people were saying. And then there's this other thought. What if Mr. Trump was a part of this? I mean, I'm not accusing him. It's like, and I'm not accusing the rest. These are just thoughts, food for thought. We need to begin to ask the right questions. We've been eating just whatever is shoved in us. You know, when you're feeding animals in a trough, they never have to look up at you. They just keep feeding me, man, man, man. We become sheeple as opposed to people. We just eat whatever. We need to ask the right questions. And so with that, uh, t t my tonight's subjects about the Jezebel spirit and the whole thing with the um, uh, uh, Martin Luther King and, uh, and why is it that these we no longer honor these people has a lot to do with because they no longer fit the narrative. No, they don't. They don't fit the narrative at all. I look at the Jesse Jacksons of this world and the, and the Al Sharptons of this world, and they fit up under my first book that I'm putting out, Pim's Politicians and Crooked Preachers. For their own self, Spirit of Jezebel, there operates very clear. They want not what you have. They want for what they can get from you. And then what they can get from you is your vote. We need to stop it. We are Americans. We are Americans, as I said. But Vinny, my friend Vinny, not Americans. Americans. When the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights was all formed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the slavery, the horrible slavery, you're right, the atrocities was unbelievable. And believe me this, a curse causeless does not come. What does that mean, Lorraine? The word of God says a curse will not come without a cause. When I look at Ukraine, the what can I say? The international cesspool of the world when it comes to mercenaries and their money, political pimps and them. Oh, absolutely. Billions of dollars being poured in to a city that's being blown up. <laughs> Ask the right questions, America. Ask the right questions. When asked, can we send somebody over, please, Mr. Zelensky, so we can see where the money's going? No. No. He said, no, we don't need that. When he showed up uh, last month or so in his uh, pimp outfit, necessarily, his, his gangster thug uh, uh, outfit, you know, you, you know, what is it? Gym shorts, uh, gym uh, outfits and tennis shoes and... No respect and reverence for the house. None. 
None. And in a way, kind of did what they call a pimp slap. Said, you will give me this money. Decades, politicians have been pouring money into Ukraine. Did you know, here's a little sidebar. Did you know Ukraine has the largest, largest number of Baptists in all of Europe is in Ukraine? That's, a, that's something to think about. That's, that's something to think about. It makes me think. So where are we now, America? And what are we going to do? Let's go back to the beginning premise. The Father. He is omnipresent. He's at the end and the beginning of history. He saw this day coming. He saw you. He saw me. We've been set up. I call it the DS factor, the divine setup. We've been set up for such a time as this. So what are you to do? And my radio show, I says, get up, America. Write a letter, make a phone call, do something. So that's kind of where I'm thinking at right now. Where are you? You know, we have our, we have a, uh, the Bible speaks about when he says, go ye to all the nations and make disciples. You know, we have our Judea. We have our Samaria. Then we have our outermost parts. We have our little neighborhood and our little community and our little family. You can start right there. Just right there. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. I, 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 um, I have a, my heart is really broken about the way we've done our veterans. Kind of got a lot on my plate, but I do what I can when I see them. And um, I got a little saying from a, from a veteran. I was, heard him talking to a school board about his children in school. And he was really good. He said this, and I will never forget this. He says, we chose to protect your freedom so that you could do dumb things. And the, uh, the dishonor, I mean, for them, they have to wait in the veterans hospital. The, unbelievable. So I'm not saying that may not be your burr under your saddle, but I believe the father, he sent you in this time. He's giving you something that's rubbing you and that's something you need to take up, whatever that may be. Is it in your Judea? What's in your Judea in your neighborhood? You know, the senior citizens, the kids, the public. Oh, please. Do we, do, do, you don't want Miss Lorraine to go to school right now. I spoke in front of the school board uh, um, last month or so, and I said, good evening, sirs. You are responsible. We have put our children in your hands. I quoted about the John money and the, and the Alfred Kinsey and the sexification of our generation. I told them that you know that if our kids get this stuff and they're turned on by something they shouldn't be doing, and if they get in trouble, they're not going to call you school board. They're going to call the parents because God commends for the parents to raise up a child in the way they should go. You know, so what are some of the things in your own area? If you don't want, and I'm not asking everybody, please, to get out with bumper stickers and flyers and go to Washington. Please don't go to Washington again. But I believe the Father has given you something to do. You think, and this is why I get mad at churches. It's probably time for me to get ready to get up out of here. I heard my little alarm go off. This is why I get mad at churches. We think as Christians, when we go to church, when we sing in the choir, when we pay our tithes and offering, that's right, since can go over to a little mission work, Mexico, or do, we think that we're done. We think we're done. We're not done. We're not done. If what you're getting from that pulpit is filling you up with the true gospel, you want to go out and spread it out. You do. And you don't have to. Do, everywhere you go, as you go, as you go, not just go, mate, as you go, as I go where? Into your world, into your community, into your block club, into your city, into your state, into your nation. As you go make disciples, and if you want to make, I'm just saying, you want to make a preacher mad, ask them, excuse me, do you have a comprehensive plan or any kind of plan for discipleship? Ooh, you better be ducking and running. They may hum and, hmm, and smile, but inside they are being grilled. Because that's the only way that we're going to do this, guys, by the way, really. Actually, yes. 
So back to your Judea. Look, ask, ask, ask the Lord to show you. Write in your own immediate community. Lord, what would you have me to do? Do I need to just write a letter to a congressman? And I write one every day. Do I need to just make a phone call? Do I need to put the speed dial on? Hello? 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 No. My kids in school, my grandchildren are in these schools. No. Do I need to? Come on. He's not asking anything of you that he has not already set you up to do. Remember, this is why you're born. You're not here for who? You're not here for you. So I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't know. I don't expect everybody to be a Lorraine Lamont. God help us. We don't need but one. I get that. But what I do know is that there's one of you. I do know that God has given you something. And I do know that you are the one for the job. So I normally close off at this time right here, guys. Again, I'll just again uh, go through the whole, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, scroll down, this is recorded. Thanks to Cherie and everything. You can look and you can see my websites on there. Lorraine, L-E-M-O, L-O-R-R-A-I-N-E, L-E-M-O-N dot net. She's already put that on there. If you scroll down more, you'll see the Hill Country Patriot, my radio. I have podcasts there. You can look at all of those. If you scroll down again, you can see the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, baby. I'm get, I got a YouTube channel. And then of course, my pray for my book. I'm trying to put my five series uh, books. I'm really put this oh, five book series of uh, Black by Popular Demand. So you can do that. And I want to put a little, just a little bug out. Motown's coming, baby. Motown. Check out Art to Heart, Art and the Number Two dot org. I don't push my nonprofit on this program. Neither do I do the same with my opinions on the other Hill Country Patriot. I advertise as like a regular nonprofit is what I do. Why? Because I don't mix the two. I've been having this nonprofit since 2003, and no, I don't talk to any of the kids about politics. I don't talk to any kids even about religion. No, I don't. This is a separate thing altogether, and I thank God that He's kept me to do it that way. So let's do. So a while back ago, my mother passed, and I do miss her dearly. And I got a lot of box of her stuff, and I opened up, and I found this little, little glass box, kind of broke a little. And I said, "Oh, that'd be great to put jewelry in." And so then, um, someone had sent me a bunch of scriptures that was also, but in a cardboard box. And I said, "Man, this would be good to take these scriptures right here and put them in this box." Wouldn't that fit fine? So I put them down in there, and I put it in here, and then I had a little sign up here saying, a scripture a day, take a vitamin, you know, when I get, so then I, I looked at this little box, and I thought this would be good to close off my nightcap at nine. So to go in here and just pick one at random, just pick one at random, let it come up, and let's see what happens. Here's one. Let's go. It says, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Psalm 1611. Let me read that again. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. I'm sure this is the New American Standard Version, but nonetheless, and you can find it in Psalm 1611. We are the most, we don't realize how blessed we really are. I love my relationship with the Father and my relationship with the Holy Spirit, and my relationship with the Lord. I do, I do, because I, 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 get, I, get to, I get to be able to have a relationship with them, even in the midst of my horrible life sometimes. My statements, things I do, sin, fall down, get up. Yes, thank you, Sheree. Yes, fall down and get up. The mercy of God overwhelms me. It just overwhelms me. And, and, and I think we cheat ourselves. We, we so is, so want to be religious. Please, I do not like religion. I do not like people to call me. You can almost, I'd rather be, one of the worst things you can call me is an African American. And the other thing you can call me next to that is religious person. I'm serious. I'm not a religious person. I believe in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He always intended, he says, as you go make. As you go, what do you mean? What do you mean as I go make disciples? As you go where? As you go wherever you go. Doctor's office, laundromat, school, your great, yes, at your job. As you go. As you go. 
Religion says, I got to do your 25 things. And this church says, you only need 23. And this church says, you need five. And then, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, and then you're done. You're not done, America. We're the most prosperous country in the world. I've been to 17 countries, my husband. And I, I live in no other. Let's pray. Let me close. Father, I thank you that you bless my sisters and brothers. Father, I thank you that you give me this opportunity to share what you've given me the best that I can. And I pray by the power of the living God that my sisters and brothers will be set free and to understand this is the country that you have given for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you all. Keep you, make his face shine upon you, give you mercy and grace. And I'll see you nightcap at 9 tomorrow. Bye-bye.